Well, welcome to this little vignette conversation uh, in, in the work of the Asia Education Foundation. It's an opportunity to uh, hear from world-leading educators across the Asia-Pacific region and hear some of the stories and insights uh, into how we can continue to improve intercultural learning uh, between uh, us and between all of our uh, neighbours across the world. So um, this particular conversation, I'm actually here um, with a very, very special guest. So uh, Amita Mulawatal is the principal of Spring Day School in, in New Delhi and is a award-winning and world-leading educator, uh, internationally recognised, has received more awards than I even have time uh, to, to announce, uh, including the recipient of the, the National Teachers Award from the President of India, uh, as well as actually an award, um, an Endeavour Award. Um, I remember you receiving a meter from the Australian government for your work in the area of Asia literacy. Uh, and so your, your, your education career has been incredibly dedicated to uh, the learning of educators and of students uh, and the communities in which you work. And uh, a few months back, you and I were, were actually in a webinar together and we were, it was actually about global citizenship and, and talking about how we develop global citizens. And I was talking about from the AF's perspective that we're very interested in developing the learners' mindsets and skill sets. And then you came in in a really lovely response and said, but we must also grow their heart sets. And so I, I just want to, like, the question I was dying to ask you at the time, can you unpack what you meant by that when you said it? Um, I'm happy that you asked me that question because, um, you know, I think that's a very important aspect of uh, what um, learning is. In fact, today, the most important emphasis in schools is to nourish mental health and well-being. Two states that affect the emotional compass of a child to a great extent. In fact, the emotional and adversarial quotient have become a very important part in understanding a child's psyche. Hence, the movement from mindset to skill set to heart set follows a very natural path. path. Our rationality is, you know, I've always believed deeply influenced by our emotions. Our heart finds reasons to support what we like and often what we don't like. In fact, in a recent study, neuroscientists have believed that the heart talks twice as much to the brain as the brain talks to the heart, which automatically lets us to believe, leads us to believe, I beg your pardon, that learning is an emotional experience. Uh, for instance, a, a child often likes a subject because of his teacher and does not like it when the teacher doesn't um, uh, sort of, uh, you know, gives positive uh, uh, vibrations to the child. Mm. So if a child does not connect well with the teacher, automatically the interest and the aptitude disappear. That is a heart set because ultimately it's a heart to heart connect that we're talking about. In fact, the best moments in life are active and they're not passive. They're demonstrative more than receptive. And children are most creative and most productive and happy when they're immersed in activity of choice. And you can tell that because, I mean, I always feel that it's, it's a state of flow because flow helps in an optimal experience, which allows them to sort of redefine the idea of learning as an internal experience rather than an external imposition. Hmm. And it flow helps in creating a sense of calm and happiness and it enhances learning. Hmm. So flow to me is the integral uh, growing of a heart state. And that's what we require to build in our classes, the flow which brings calm, happiness, and joy. So the child makes learning a part of himself. That's what I think heart set is. Beautiful. I mean, it, I mean it's, it's so deeply inspiring to hear you articulate it uh, in such a powerful way. And, and I, I just, I think there's, so, there's incredible truth um, and, and, and clearly evidence to what you're saying. Given your extensive work and leadership in education over many decades, where, where might you have seen some of this heart set shine best? Have you got maybe a, a great example or memory where you've seen that heart set just really shine? So I've seen that the heart set shines when children see school as a safe place, a place of joy, where their identity is recognized and they're made visible and they're allowed 
personal creativity, space, and, and a sense of flexibility. And it also shines in a class when you develop their curiosity and confidence. And it improves, which they improve at their own place and space, in their thoughts, in their attitudes, in their choices. And, and they move from sort of self-centeredness to other-centeredness. Because that is what a heart set is about. It's about the other, you know, and seeing yourself as an integral part of the other. So I believe that building up the heart set is most important because you're setting up a child for success. If a child is not able to cope, then they cannot learn. Because again, as I mentioned, learning always takes around an emotional experience. Whether it is conscious discipline that we're involved with or managing behaviors. Heart set gives a sort of a tool to commit to the language of learning in a very positive way. Mm. So they're able to work through conflict in a classroom. They're able to work through conflict in a home. And you know, homes are very dysfunctional today. We have to guide children through the heart set tool to work through the conflict at home. And as they grow, they will work through the conflict in the world. In fact, it is one of the most important skill sets for understanding diversity and, and, and creating a youth for youth, global, national, regional, personal connect. So mm -hmm. I think that's where I find that it shines a lot when you work with young people, when you work with them in zones, in classes and play fields, uh, so that you develop them into the adult that they're going to be. Wonderful. That, that's... um. Again, so many lovely insights into, into how we start to understand to help it reveal and help it shine. And I think probably, you know, this year more than any other, that, that 2020 has shown us that there are many challenges for the world and continue to be many global issues. Perhaps I'm interested to know in, in what aspects of learning and global awareness do you think, where do we need to put more effort into growing that heart set? Skills of the 21st century emit from hearts, which is essentially, you know, skills of um, communication, conflict resolution, because relationship brings in all these issues. It also brings in problem solving. We can come together and really solve a problem. It helps us to decision make. It helps us to communicate, to collaborate and view the other through a, a lens of empathy and compassion. Believing that we are not souls trapped by geographical boundaries, but we are a part of the whole world. I think this, is, this helps a lot in creating a sense of global citizenship because the, the COVID has brought to our doorsteps that rich, poor, black, white, Australian, Indian, American, we're all in the same cosmic soup together and we need to connect to our hearts. Oh, yeah. Again, beautifully said, Amita. Look, so, so much of this is connected to how we see ourselves as learners. And, I, and when I say that, I mean, you know, educators and students, you know, and, and developing, as you say, that, that compassion and awareness of the world around them. And also helping uh, young people realise that their words and actions really matter. Have you got some other ways of how, how might we help encourage that heart set in our schools? How do we help remind uh, our students that their words and actions matter? And actually also for our, our educators too. The most important learning in the life of a child should be to create, we should help in creating mindfulness, empathy, meaning, and engagement um, in order to be inspired to connect with the larger world outside. If we nurture these heart sets, then children are able to verbalize the emotion of what they're going through and they develop confidence. They're also ready to speak about their problems rather than reacting to them. And there's too much of reaction going on these days. There's no reflection, there's more reaction. So the deepest level of understanding is embodied understanding. And the student's knowledge is not merely sort of a head knowledge. And, and it's interesting, but, you know, understanding is something we've neglected. We go on about learning. We go on about memory. But we've never really deconstructed understanding except as a textbook understanding. But there is a much deeper understanding about how we look at the world. 
and how the student is able to deploy a sort of a learning spontaneously and naturally through compassionate learning. So if a student sees an act of injustice, he or she is able to intervene or act in a wise manner while maintaining compassion on both sides. There's no victim. We are all sort of packages of what happens to us. So in a certain sense, none of us are really victims. So it is to recognize that you don't victimize me. A heart set requires a very deep internalization of learning through practice. It requires a sort of a repeated, sustained application, which automatically gets um, uh, translated into a lived reality through analysis, through critical thinking, through reflection. Again and again, reflection is extremely important. So we need to bring in the model of reflection and mindfulness in our classrooms. My final question to you is, you know, what messages come through for you about the importance of growing our heart set? You know, it's very interesting that you say this, Hamish, because um, in many ways, I also grew up in a Christian tradition because I was, you know, as a child, always in a convent. And to me, the whole uh, idea of Diwali and Christmas are two festivals where the light is so important because uh, it's the star through which we followed Christ at Christmas. The light led us to him. And so also Diwali is, is a festival of light. And, it, and I think it is this light that educates the heart. The, the messages that we receive from these uh, diverse celebrations are not only to survive, but to flourish, to move from existence to coexistence, from confrontation to interaction from alienation to collaboration. And finally, to move from the intimate to the ultimate. The ultimate may be your spirit, it may be your God, it may be your philosophy, it may be your ethics, it may be your values, but I think and it, 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 it should be your heart set, the ultimate. So we need to create transformative pathways that point a way to a new reality that matters for everyone because you know, I, I remember this African proverb which says that it takes a village to raise a child. But the reverse is equally true. Why do we think that children are just passive recipients of our goodwill and effort? It may take a, a child to raise a village. Because without a child, and we can see that, it takes a child to raise a school. And today schools are just a brick and mortar because they're lying there empty and our children are not there. So our children are active change makers who can help us to uh, grow up and become more conscious, aware, and a, a very mindful society. In fact, I've noticed that children feel very strongly and passionately, if you notice, about their pets, about their environment, about sustainability, about wildlife. In fact, they have within them an inborn sense of justice and fairness, both rightness. And, and you know, I think that we have to work on that because it starts sort of diminishing as they grow older and they meet the adult world. And, and I think essentially children's heart sets are far more evolved than those of an adult. But we can't lose it and we have to work on it because um, if, if we want to see, you know, the change in the world, as Gandhi said, then, you know, we have to be the change. And so our children have to do that change. And I think at the, at the heart of everything lies the attitude and the choices and the voices of our children through their heartbeats. Eloquently and articulately um, captured, and I, I find it really inspiring. I'm, I'm so grateful for your time. Thank you so much for chatting uh, with us, Amita. You're an inspiration for so many uh, educators and people looking to grow their heart set. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.